What's up guys, Velocity here with Pitchfork Academy and I'm super excited to be bringing you another Unreal Engine 5 material tutorial. In today's tutorial, we'll be looking at water and more specifically, the single layer water shading model that allows us to render water a little bit more realistically than the traditional translucency method. If this is something that excites you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any suggestions for future material tutorials. All right, guys, to get started, we want to launch Unreal Engine 5.4 and click the games category on the left and select the third person template. This way we can see the relation of the scale of the character and the ripples on the water and get an overall feel for how our character looks in the scene with the water material. You name your project, whatever you like, go ahead and click create and we'll continue in the engine. All right, once we're in Unreal Engine 5, we want to go ahead and click file, new level, and we'll select the basic level. You can select open world, but keep in mind this will enable world partition and it can increase your loading times when you're working with your level. I recommend using the basic level at first to get a good feel of all your materials in your scene. And then later on, when you have a good grasp of how all of those things work together, you can move to an actual open world level template. I'm gonna click basic and create. Once we're in here, we want to zoom out and we can delete this uh, box here. Next, we want to go to selection mode, click landscape, and just hit create. There's a ton of settings here that you can mess with to fine tune the size of your landscape and how dense the vertices are. But for our cases, we just want a landscape to sculpt a little bit so we can see how the water material is affected by the height of our terrain. All right, once this finishes up, you can go ahead and kind of get a better camera angle looking a little bit down from above. And right away, you'll see that you're in landscape mode. So you can see that you have this brush. You can go ahead and paint and sculpt up. But this brush is pretty small. So over on the left, we can uh, increase the brush size. So now we have a very large brush and we can sculpt very large hills right away. I'm gonna sculpt a mountain range. If you hold shift and click when you uh, sculpt, like the whole time while you're clicking, you can sculpt downward. This will be nice for a little lake. And let's go ahead and lower the scale of the brush again back down. And while holding shift and clicking, I'm gonna draw again and create a little bit of a, a river kind of going around the edge here. Not the best river, but it is a river. Some of the other tools up top are pretty useful. This smooth tool will help us smooth out any of the brush marks that you see. So I'm just gonna go over the whole area a little bit, and smooth it out. All right, so we can adjust this later on. I just wanna get a little bit of a terrain so we can see how the water is reacting to the height. Now we can go back to landscape mode at the top, click that and switch it from landscape mode to selection mode. All right, now that we have the terrain in our landscape, we can click um, this button here to quickly add to the project. We wanna use a shape and it will be a plane. Once we have the plane in the level, go over to the right in the details panel and just click zero or click on all of these and make them zero. So we have it in perfectly centered in the world. Now it's still way too small. So we can click this lock button on the scale and we can set this to a higher number. Let's try 10,000. All right, now we have a huge plane and it extends pretty much into the horizon. We can take this a step further though. Let's go to 100,000. Now it pretty much fades in the distance and this is what we want. We don't want the player to be able to see the edge of the plane because it'll give away the effect. It'll kind of make it seem like it's fake, so. Now we have this fading edge, which looks pretty nice. All right, guys, once we have the plane covering the entire scene and we have our landscape set up, now we're ready to go ahead and create a materials folder and create the material. So to start, we'll go to new folder, name this materials. And inside this folder, we'll right click and create a material. And we'll name this M underscore water. Now we can open it up. All right, and the first thing that we'll need to do is change the shading model from default lit to single layer water. 
Now you'll see we have an error here and that's because we still need to get another node out similar to this one. As you can see here, it says single layer water materials require the use of single layer water material output node. So we can just right click and search for that single layer and it should be the only option that pops up. Now we have a few errors here. These will get um, removed as soon as we plug some stuff into these first two outputs. So to start, we need to get a couple of color nodes out. So to do that, we can hold three on our keyboard and click and we can right click it and convert to parameter and we'll call this water scattering. This will be the color of the water where the water is really deep and kind of can simulate a glowing effect um, similar to what you would see in a natural spring or something like that. Now we can just copy and paste this node and we'll rename this water color. All right, now off of water scattering, we need to drag off and search for multiply. And we'll multiply this by a scalar parameter. And to get a scalar parameter, you can just hold S and click. And right away, it'll let you name it whatever the scalar parameter should be. In this case, it's water scattering amount. Now we could just plug this right in here, but I happen to know that this value is very sensitive when it gets plugged into the scattering coefficients output. So a trick that I like to do is to divide this number by a thousand. Now, when we adjust this value, it won't be so sensitive and we can gradually see the change instead of it being very instant. So now we can just plug this straight into here and this can go into here. Now for the water color, it's a little bit different. This absorption coefficients output here expects the opposite color in which you would like to see on your water. And that's because basically whatever color you plug into here, it's telling the engine that that's the color that it's absorbing. So it should show every color that's opposite to it. So to fix that, we can simply right click and search for hue shift and the color will go into texture and the hue shift percentage will be a single value. And to get a single value, you can hold one on your keyboard and click and we're gonna type in 0.5. And this will be the hue shift percentage. And the reason for that is that think of the color wheel as a full circle is zero to one. And for example, if we wanted the water to be this color, then we would need to shift our color to here because the absorption expects the opposite color. So 50% or 0.5 will go to the opposite and one would be a full circle. So that's why we wanna change it to 0.5 for the hue shift percentage. Now this will go into a multiply and we'll follow the same logic from up here. So we need another scalar parameter and this will be called water absorption. And we'll also divide it by a thousand. So we can just copy by control C on this node and then click next to this node and hit control V. And plug this right into here and go into there. Now we'll set some default values. So when we put the material on our water, it already looks good. So the default value for the scattering will be 0.25 and the water absorption will be five. In the water scattering color, we can set to something like this, about halfway on this right bar here and about there. And then the color will be similar, but a little bit more blue and darker like that. These we can mess with once we get it onto our plane in the scene. All right, now that we have this, we can move it all up here. Uh, hover over all of them and select and hit C on my keyboard to name this water color. This is everything to do with the color of our water. All right, so you can see our errors down here went away and now we can begin to add some more nodes. So one thing that we need to do is add a couple of nodes here to control the roughness and the opacity. We'll actually just hold one on our keyboard and click for a constant value and we'll plug that right into roughness so that way it's completely shiny. And as you can see here, then we'll duplicate this and plug this into opacity. All right, so you can see we're starting to get what looks like a drop of water and you can see kind of it's a little bit transparent and it has some nice reflections and this nice blue color.
All right, so you might be wondering what we're gonna put in this space, and that's going to be the ripples of the water, which we'll use by affecting the normal map input here. So we'll work from left to right. So we need to right click and get a world position node. This is similar to a texture coordinate node, but since we're using a plane that's scaled very, very large, if we use a texture coordinate scale, we'll have to basically scale the texture an extreme amount. The world position node allows us to basically not have to worry about the scale of our object. And we could place the same material on, for example, a plane that's in a pool or a small pond, and we would have the same scaling of our water. So this allows us not to have to create a ton of different material instances with different scales, and we can keep one nice material that we'll use for all of the water in our project. So off of XY, and if you don't have XY, you can just pull off of the first node on the world position offset and search for component mask. And by default, it will mask out the RNG, which in this case is XY. In materials, XYZ is the same as RGB. I'm not gonna do that because in Unreal Engine 5.4, they give us this nice XY node to drag off of here. So off of this, I'll search for divide and we'll get another scalar parameter by holding S on our keyboard and clicking, whoops. And I'll name this water scale. By default, I'll set this to 3000 and then plug this into here. All right, from here, we need a panner node. This will allow us to pan the texture over time. So time by default is here, so we don't need to plug anything into this. But you'll notice that speed has a value of x and y, but there's only one input. So how do we get two inputs or two values into this one? And to do that, we need an append vector node. So we can right click, search for append vector right here. And whatever goes into A will apply to the first value and B will apply to the second. So A in this case is x and B is y. So now we can go ahead and search for another scalar parameter or just hold S and click. Now this will be speed one X. And the reason I'm having it as one X is because we'll have another version of the water ripples that will be going the opposite direction. And we'll wanna change the speed and direction of those separately. So this will allow us to have a little bit more control. Now we can copy and paste this node here and this will be speed one Y plug these up to here and this will go into speed. By default, we'll set these to, let's say 0 0.0075 and this one will be 0 0.01. So these are close, but it's going a little bit more um, in the Y direction than the X direction. And this will allow us to not have to see the tiling and repetition of our water ripples as much because they're going in slightly different directions as what we'll have down below, which will go um, also in a different direction. All right, now off of this painter node, we can finally get our texture by searching texture sample parameter 2D. This will allow us to name the texture right away and we'll call this water ripple texture. Now over on the left, when this node is selected, we'll have a uh, drop down here. We can search water. The engine comes with a default water texture called water underscore N. This is what we'll be using. If you have a different texture, feel free to use it. If you wanna change the art style, for example, or make it more or less realistic, but I'll be using the default one today. All right, so now we have the basic setup for panning one texture and scaling it. But now we need to basically duplicate most of this on the right here. And we need to rename these two parameters here. So this will be speed 2x, and this one will be speed 2y. And these default values will be a little bit different. These will go negative because they're going the opposite direction. So we'll do negative 0 0.01. So negative 0 0.01. And then this one will be negative 0 0.005. This way they're all going at different speeds and directions and the uh, repetition will not be as noticeable. Now we'll actually use the same scale, but before we plug it into here, I wanna do a trick to make it 
so we have even less repetition. So we'll multiply this by a small value of maybe 1.25. If we multiplied this by one, there would be no difference, but this way, this texture here that's going the opposite direction will be 1.25 times larger. So when the textures pass over each other, it won't be as noticeable that they're the same texture. All right, so we're getting somewhere. Now we need to combine these two textures together and to combine two normal maps, we need to search for a node called blend angle corrected normals. And it doesn't matter which one's the base or the additional because they're the same texture. So we'll plug this one into base, this one into additional. And then from here, um, we actually don't wanna do anything yet because we need to duplicate all of this and paste it down here. And the only difference will be that this parameter here needs to be called water scale distance. Now this is so that when we have our water in the scene, when we look at it from far away, the texture can be much, much larger. So for example, we can set this to 50,000. Now up close, the water can be a scale of 3000 and far away, it will be a scale of 50,000. Now to combine these together, we need to use a linear interpolate. So if we right click, search for linear, interpolate, we get this node. Now this is a very common node. It allows you to basically blend between two values, A and B, based off of this alpha. This alpha can be anything. It could be a texture. It could be uh, the distance from the camera to whatever pixel you're looking at. And that's what we'll be doing with this. So um, A will be the close water and B will be the far water. And the alpha will be a mask that we're going to create now based on the depth of the camera. So I'll just move down here a little bit and we'll right click, search for pixel depth offset, or just pixel depth, sorry. And then we can drag off of this and search for subtract. Basically, we're going to subtract from the pixel that we're looking at to get the distance at which the water should change from being the small scale to the big scale. So from the B, we need to get another scalar parameter. So I'll hold S and click for a scalar and we'll call this distance water begin. Plug this into B and by default, we'll set this to be 5,000. So for 5,000 units from the camera, it will basically start the transition between the close water and the far water. And then to make it a little bit of a softer transition, we need to fade it. So starting at 5,000, basically now we're going to divide, and this will be another scalar parameter. We can just copy and paste this one, and we'll call this one distance water uh, fade. Distance water fade. And we'll set this default value to 25,000. So at 5,000 units from the camera, it will begin to blend it another 25,000 units into the distance. And now we need to saturate. The reason for this is it keeps the value between zero and one. And if you remember on the LERP, it takes a value, um, you know, A being zero, B being one. So we need the value of this mask to stay between zero and one. And that's what saturate does. As you can see here, it clamps the value between zero and one. And another way to do this is simply to search for a clamp. But I happen to know that the saturate is just a cheaper node and it works better for performance. So we won't use clamp. All right, now we could just plug the saturate straight into the alpha here and that would work fine. But in case we wanna use this for other effects on our water, we can basically cache this information. So we can search reroute and we want to add a named reroute declaration node. So now we can name this distance mask. Now, if I go back up to our LERP here and I right click near it and search for distance and scroll all the way up, any named reroutes will be at the very top. So we have distance mask. And remember, this is the same thing as plugging this into here. It just allows us to clean up our graph a little bit and we can select all of these nodes and click C on our keyboard and we'll name this distance mask. All right. Now we could plug the LERP right into normal, but the problem with that is we can't control how harsh or soft the water looks. So to affect that, we can drag off of the LERP and search for flatten normal. 
and the flatness here is the value that will change how harsh the water looks, basically the intensity of this texture here that we're using for the ripples. So one thing that I like to do instead of plugging a scaler right into here, I'll call this normal intensity. And instead of plugging this right in, basically we want to search for a node called one minus, and that will change it from being water flatness to water intensity. So now zero will be no ripples at all in one will be the full ripples. I happen to know that a value of 0 0.05 looks pretty nice. You can adjust this based on your taste or how uh, harsh that you want the water to look. So now that we have this, we can plug it right into normal. All right, I'm gonna move these nodes over a little bit and then select everything that has to do with the ripples and just move it up closer to our color information up here. And then we can plug flatten normal straight into normal. All right, now we should be able to save and create a material instance so we can change all of these parameters to our liking. So I'm going to close out of our material and go back to the level. And you can always just drag a material onto the plane, but what we'll do is right click, create material instance, name this MI underscore water, and that's for material instance. And now we can drag it on. And right away, you can see that we have a nice water material and up close, the ripples become much smaller and at a distance, they get a little bit bigger. So we don't see the repetition in the tiling like we would if it was this scale all the way across the plane. All right, guys, so it's coming together pretty well. And now we need to basically click on our plane and search for collision. And we want to change collision preset from default to no collision. This will allow our character to run through the water and not walk on it like it is ice. So, all right, now we should be able to click these three buttons here. And you want to make sure that you're selected current camera location. So now when we hit play, we'll spawn right where the camera's at. And now if we run into the water, you can see we run through it and there's no issue there. I'll go ahead and click escape and we'll continue working on the material. Now we want to. Um, remove this collision here. And if you click on the plane, you can find the material in the details panel. All right, here's our material instance. If these drop downs are closed for you, just go ahead and open them and then you'll see all of your parameters. Now you'll notice that all these parameters are kind of jumbled up and they're not in any specific order or groups. So let's go ahead and change that now. So if we go back into our master material in the graph, make it full screen, we can go through and create groups for all of our material parameters. So all of the things for the color are up top. So I'll select all of them and see on the left, we have group. Instead of none, we'll go ahead and type in color. So just again, make sure that each of these nodes, when you click on them, it says group color. So scattering, scattering amount, absorption, and water color are all in the group color. All right, so now we want to make sure that all of these information for the ripples is in a group as well. We'll actually create two categories for the ripples because there's a lot of information here. So, all right, so everything that has to do with the speed of the ripples, we'll highlight all of those and we'll put it in a group called ripples speed. Now everything else, the water scale distance, the water scale, those will go in a category just called ripples. Oops. And same with the texture. You can actually just highlight one of these because they're all the same. And once I put one of them in the group um, for ripples, it should be this one in there as well. Yeah, so if I click on these, you can see they're already in the ripples group. And then normal intensity over here, we can also put into ripples. And then the distance stuff down here, we'll select these two nodes and we'll call this distance. All right, so now if I save all of our materials or all of our material parameters should be in a group. Awesome, so everything with our color is up here. Our distance controls are here. Ripples are here in the scale and then the speeds are down here. All right, so our water is moving 
pretty good and our colors looking awesome but I want to showcase a little bit what you can do with the water color information up here so water absorption is basically the thickness of the water if you crank it up really high you can get some really bad distortion on the edge so I recommend not going above about 50 uh, I like a value of a five it kind of makes it look pretty transparent like the water is really clean and clear and the color is basically just the overall color of the water but you'll notice sometimes when I go into certain values that the other color starts to shine through and that's the scattering color so this is where the water is really really deep so if I for example increase the brightness and the saturation of this and set it to a green color and then go back to our watercolor. You can see you get some really interesting results and you can really make some kind of alien water if you mess around with these values enough and find something that fits your project. Try something like that. Yeah, pretty weird colors going on there. I'll keep mine at more of a realistic look. So I'll set my water back to, or my watercolor back to blue and then the scattering that's sort of a greenish color. That water's probably too blue. Let's do something like this. Not as saturated and a little bit more in the green. All right. Now you can see um, the distance fade happens right around this area here. You can see right up close, the water ripples are pretty small. And then in the distance, they're large. Just to showcase that, we could crank this water scale distance up to 500,000. And now you can see when we're up close, we get the small ripples and then at around here, it fades up to this really large scale. I'm going to control Z and go back to 50,000. I think that's a decent value. So when we're really up high, we can see that there's not much repetition in the ripples and up close, it's nice and uh, small. So that way we can see how it looks with our character. And the speed, for example, we can change those a little bit. If I crank this up, you can see it moves much faster. And if I don't put any negative values, so if I change the speed 2x and 2y to positive values, you can see the water moves in one direction. Now, if you have a river or something like that, this might be a little bit more useful. You can see they're sort of panning on top of each other there. I'll control Z back to the values I had, which are right here. All right, so the last thing that I wanna to add to this material is refraction, and that's going to help the water look more realistic and sort of distort the surface below it. So to do that, we'll go back to our master material, open it up, and we wanna zoom in on the root node here. So as you can see, refraction currently, it says disabled here. So all we have to do to enable that is scroll down on the bar here in the details panel, and under refraction method, we'll switch this to pixel normal offset. Now you can see it says refraction pixel normal offset and we just need to right click and convert this to a parameter it'll go way up here and we'll put this in a category of its own called refraction and i happen to know that a value of 0 0.05 works pretty well if you crank this up too high the water starts to look a little bit too distorted uh, from a distance so we'll just leave it there for now and we can adjust it a little bit more when we look at our material. Minimize this one. All right, so now you can see that the checkerboard material, anywhere that it's under the water, it gets distorted. And just to emphasize that a little bit more, we can turn on the parameter here and move this up. So now you can see that the water is really getting distorted based on the ripples above it. I really wouldn't put this above, say, 1.1, because if you crank it too high, starts to look pretty weird when you're looking from above. So I think a value of 1.1 is nice. And if we go ahead and click play, you can see that it even distorts the character's body when it's below the water. All right, guys, so our water material is looking pretty good. It has all of the basic effects that you would need for a water material in Unreal Engine. You can always take this a step further. You could look into mesh distance fields, which allows the water to sort of read the shoreline and you can have effects that pan away or towards the shore for example foam or little ripples but um, this just is here to get you started and uh, the last thing I want to do is go back into our material and I want to put everything that has to do with the ripples into a big comment box make sure everything's selected I'll click C and name this water ripples you can move this back over here a bit this up here this we could actually move all up here, make it nice and organized. 
All right, remember, you have this distance mask parameter. So if I right click again, I can search for dist and it will just come up here. So now remember, you can use this as a mask to mask out any effect. For example, if you wanted to have foam in the distance of the like ocean, but not up close near the player, you would plug any information regarding that foam into B and whatever you want up close to happen near the character up at A. And then this will just go into the alpha. So you can use that for really any effect if you want to make the water less transparent up close, but you know, look a little bit uh, not as tr transparent in the distance, you could use this for that. But for now, I think this will do us just fine and gives us a nice, good looking water material for our projects. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's tutorial. I hope that you learned something new. And if you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe and then comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions on future material tutorials. But that's going to do it for today. This is Velocity with Pitchfork Academy, and I'll see you guys in the next one.